Hey there, happy coders. In this video, I'm going to play around with uh, sort of image processing and glitch art. And I'm doing that because uh, it's January. Uh, it's January 3rd, I think. Uh, so January is this event that happens in January where every day you get a different prompt. And today's prompt is glitch art. Uh, glitch art is this whole family of art that is uh, sort of surrounded by the idea of maybe mistakes aren't bad. Uh, maybe things that you might encounter as like errors or as imperfections, maybe that is the art. Um, so here's an example in Wikipedia of like a kind of a video uh, of glitch art where it's kind of glitchy, but it's also kind of cool looking. Um, so lots of examples through, through history and um, lots of stuff to look into there. Uh, I'll let you kind of uh, think about that uh, on your own time, I guess. Um, and so, yeah, there we are. Uh, we're just going to play around with glitch art. Um, so what I've done so far is um, I've just downloaded a few images. These are images. These are pictures that I've taken with my phone. Uh, most of these were taken last year, but yeah, it doesn't really matter. They're just random images that I had laying around. Um, and I put them in this uh, directory and then I kind of resized them. That's the only thing I've done um, ahead of time. Uh, so um, I think I'm going to use processing today. Uh, I've used P5 quite a bit in a lot of these videos. And to be honest with you, I just uh, I have a lot of uh, sort of image processing videos for P5 and not as many for processing. So I'm going to I'm going to try it out with processing tonight. Uh, so I've got processing open and uh, it's been a while since I've used processing. This is kind of fun. Uh, if I hit run. All right. I've got my little window. OK. And what I want to do is copy my images directory into it here. First, maybe I'll save just so I have it somewhere. And what do I want to call this? Maybe like glitch filter or something. doesn't really matter, but I'll call it that. Um, does that work? Yeah, there it is up here. Uh, and then I want to, a couple ways I can do this, but I'm going to do it the manual way. I'm going to open this directory up and then put my images directory in there. So now I'm going to reopen my um, sketch. And OK, so I have my sketch directory, which now contains an images folder. And that images folder contains all of my images. There were a few ways to do that, but whatever, it works. So I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um, so next, what I want to do is maybe just get a window up and trying to remember some of the syntax here. This is kind of fun. I haven't done this in forever. Um, I think it's size instead of create canvas and I'll say 500, 500 just to get something started. And okay, that's reasonable. I realize the text is kind of small. Can I zoom into that? No. Uh, can I? Mm, 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 mm. Is there a way to change the, I'm sure there is, change the font size. Uh, editor font size, there we go. Can I change it to 18? Does that work? Uh, closer. Hopefully you can see that. <laughs> but uh, in any case, I have my uh, code and I have my window here. So the next thing I want to do is maybe load one of the images into a uh, p image variable. So I'm going to create a p image. I'm just going to call it image for now. And then in setup, I want to say image equals load image and then give it a uh, load image and then give it a name of a file. So for that, I want to go back to my directory. And what did I say? I said images and then, I don't know, image to .jpg just to get it working. And then in void draw, I will say draw image image zero zero width height. Okay. And why didn't that work? Oh, it's not draw image. It's just image. <laughs> If I didn't know that ahead of time, I could check out the processing reference. If I go to processing.org and then in documentation, in reference, I can check out the function for um, drawing an image, which is just in this case, uh, image here. So this is the function I was looking for, but I think I remembered it, so all good. Uh, so let's run this and see what happens. And all right, that mostly works um, but there's an issue that i'm going to face and i'm going to get kind of annoyed by if i don't fix it and that is the sort of aspect ratio of my of my image 
So let me pick one that's a little bit more obvious. I want to draw this uh, this cat one. This is a cat that used to live down the corner, and you can kind of see it's like scrunched. It's kind of stretched and uh, not not uh, not very aesthetically pleasing. So that's because I'm drawing it at a width and a height of 500 by 500, but the image itself is not a square. It's a it's a rectangle. Um, so I could have maybe cropped the images ahead of time, but I'm lazy, so I didn't. Uh, so what I need to do is uh, a few things I could do. I could crop the images now. I could do that in processing, but I think I'm just going to resize my window to match the aspect ratio. I actually don't know what that is ahead of time. I did resize these just so they're a little smaller, but um, I didn't really worry about the aspect ratio. So it's a 1008 by 756. So I want to figure out, maybe I'll keep the same width, or I could maybe even go a little bit bigger. If I go like 600 maybe. Nah, let's just stick with 500. Um, so if I stick with 500 as my width, I want to figure out what I want my height to be. So let me, first of all, remember what those numbers were. They were 1,008 and 756. So I think what I need is 500 um, times, oh, I actually have done this before, I guess. Uh, so 500 times the height over the width. Uh, yeah, and I think this will give me the the height that I need to like maintain that aspect ratio. Uh, if this doesn't make sense, let me know and I can try to explain it a little bit better. But for now, I'm just going to say 375 here. And now I hope that my cat is not scrunched. And that looks better to me. That matches what I sort of see if I open up the image by itself. Um, cool. It's resized a little bit, but um, the it's not smushed anymore. All right. So I've got an image drawn to the screen, which is always a good step one. And next, what do I want to do? I want to glitch it. <laughs> I want to make this image look glitchy. And there's a, there's a ton of ways I could do that. And I might explore a few different options, but really all of them have a few things in common. I am going to do a few things. One, I'm going to like pick a random point in the image. Uh, I'm going to get the color for that random point. So I'm going to like point to a random spot in the image and get its color. And then I'm going to draw something with that color, maybe like a shape or a line or a circle or some combination. So uh, let's just do that. So I have my image drawn. I think I'll likely change that in a second. But um, to get something working first, let's pick some points. So I'm going to say int x equals random number between zero and width. And I wonder if um, I need to factor in a couple things. So yeah, first of all, okay, it's complaining that it, I, I need an int, but I am giving it a float. Uh, so I'm going to call int instead to convert it to an int. Again, a few ways to do this, but this will at least quiet down the compiler. And so I'm thinking ahead right now because I realized that this is the width of the window but that's not the width of the image. So I might have to resize my image to match these numbers, or I might need to get like the, the random of like image.width maybe. There are a few ways to do this. I think I'll do that way. Um, so now um, image.width and image.height. So now X and Y are random numbers between zero and width or zero and height. So it's a random point inside of the image. And just to be on the safe side, I actually am going to call like image.resize of width and height, just so that I don't have to think hard about my image being a different size than my screen. So now, now it doesn't really matter. I could have used width and height here or image.width and image.height. Those should be the same thing, hopefully. Uh, I'm doing a lot of coding right now without testing it and it's making me feel nervous. So I'm just gonna try to get something working. So uh, next, maybe what I'll do is maybe I'll just draw a circle uh, right at right at x y, just to get something working, just to see what it does, just to make sure that it's doing what I expect. So I kind of expect random uh, circles to be drawn over top of my image. Let's just double check, and I think that's mostly working. It's um, redrawing the image every single time, which might be fine, but we're going to decide in a second. But what I'm mostly checking is that my circles seem to be drawn like inside of my image, and it's kind of hard to tell 
that it's like for sure a hundred percent of them but i think it looks pretty pretty okay and we're going to find out for sure in a second um but what i could do is get the color from the image first so maybe i'll say oh i forget the syntax for this is it lowercase c color uh pixel color equals image dot get x y is that right and then maybe i'll say fill of pixel color this color type is weird and it's a very specific like processing thing it's not a java thing so it always I, I almost never use it but in this case i think it'll come in handy so let's save this and run this and see what happens and okay uh because i'm drawing my image every single time the only thing you're seeing is like an image and then one random circle um, which doesn't really give us a lot of information so i'm going to move that up to my setup function so that um it only draws the image once and then it draws all of the uh, circles on top of the image so they should add up over time and i'm just kind of eyeballing it and it looks it looks right i think that my logic for getting the x and the y and for getting the color are correct because i'm drawing circles like over top of the uh, pixel uh, with that same color so i'm filling the the canvas with these circles um, this is already kind of cool i could maybe set like maybe i'll get rid of the stroke color no stroke and let that go and so now i'm sort of making the the like image more i don't know like painterly and i actually really like this this kind of aesthetic but it's not quite like glitchy it's not quite what i'm going for with glitchiness um i also wonder if i'm getting my full frame rate so let's say i'm just going to print something out just for debugging purposes I'm, I'm kind of suspicious that i'm doing like slow things like getting a color from an image takes a long time so i'm wondering if um my frame rate is is suffering so i'm just going to say a frame count I don't know percent 60 equals so once per second I'll say print line frame rate I think that works let's check and I want to just run this and just double check just to see and no it's actually it's actually 60 all right so I'm actually surviving pretty well okay um okay so now what do I have I have my image loaded which is a good step one and I have I'm drawing the image to the screen right at the beginning and then every frame I'm generating a random point inside that image and I'm getting the color from that point and then I'm doing something with that color in this case I'm just drawing a circle so next I kind of just want to play with different things I could do maybe instead of a um, circle maybe I draw a line so maybe instead of fill I'll say like stroke and then instead of ellipse maybe I'll say line of I don't know uh, x minus 25 y x plus 25 y maybe so now I'm hoping that it kind of fills with like kind of horizontal line segments which is kind of a uh, an aesthetic in the glitch filter uh, world or the glitch art world um, so yeah it kind of fills up over time and that's it's kind of hard to see um, i could speed this up a little bit maybe so here's a trick i like to play with some of this uh some of the stuff where i will maybe introduce a for loop or maybe i'll call this like draw one line and then i'll re-implement draw with a for loop for uh oh man i'm typing in javascript uh int i equals zero i is less than say 100 i plus plus and then inside of that for loop i will call my draw one line function and why are you complaining uh oh because i am missing a curly brace okay so now i have a for loop that calls the draw one line function uh 100 times so it'll speed up my my frame rate quite a bit or it'll blow up my computer and yeah i kind of like that that's kind of cool you can kind of maybe just think on it for a minute yeah i don't hate it uh, i think it could get glitchier though 
um, maybe instead of a line, maybe it's a rectangle. So let me put this back to uh, fill and let me go back to no stroke. And I'll just comment this out for now. Uh, so now I'm going to have a rectangle and I'm going to say X minus 25. Actually, it doesn't really matter. It's going to go X, Y. And then um, this is a width and a height, I think. So I'm going to say like, I don't know, 125. See what that looks like. And ooh, that's that's probably too too big. Uh, let's go. I don't know, ten, and maybe this should be like twenty. Yeah, maybe. Uh, it's it's kind of fun. It's not it's not quite glitchy. I don't know. I'm I'm kind of going for a specific kind of aesthetic where it. Uh, where is that here? Where it's like. I don't know, kind of liney. I don't know a, different, a better way to explain it, but like a lot of the sort of things I've seen before have a lot of like lines to them, both like horizontal and uh, vertical. I don't know what this does. Yeah, it's kind of kind of trippy, kind of liney. Um, so I don't know. I kind of like the idea of a line. Maybe I'll go back to the line. Uh, I could kind of just keep playing with it, but let's go back to the line. And what do I need to do here? I need to go stroke and get rid of that. Yeah. Okay. So from here, some things I could play with is maybe instead of having it be like a short line segment, I could make it take up the whole width. Um, so what could I do? I want this to be from zero Y to width Y. Is that all? I think. Let's find out. Oh, maybe. <laughs> um, so yeah, now what's happening is I'm I, I'm locating a random x y point, and then I'm um, drawing a horizontal line, like the full width of of that. Could maybe also try to do it the other way, do it vertically. Um, maybe I'll actually just have an if statement that like randomizes it. So like if uh, random is less than one then that else um hmm. oh i'm i'm so used to uh p5 and, and javascript now that i i've forgotten some of this syntax but uh this is i need a, a an argument in there okay so i'm saying if uh basically flip a coin give me a random number between zero and one, and this should be less than 0.5. Um, that's funny, I think maybe my muscle memory knew that there had to be one in there, but I, I put the one here, uh, whatever, coding is weird. Um, so give me a random number between zero and one, and then if that number is less than 0.5, so basically give it a 50% chance to draw this like horizontal line. Otherwise, I wanna draw a vertical line, so let me try that. So this one needs to be um, x, zero, uh, x height i think so now i should have a mix of um like horizontal and vertical lines i i have no idea what this is going to look like which is part of the fun of of glitch art let's let's try it out and yeah maybe <laughs> i don't know i don't know if i if i love love it uh it's kind of cool but it's kind of like too abstract and maybe i should slow this down quite a bit maybe i'll go back to like just one for now um so you can kind of see that it 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 does fill the um, the the window the screen with um, with lines that kind of match the color and you know that's kind of fun I don't know if it I don't know if it's what I'm going for though um, you know maybe I'll play around with some of the other images just just for funsies um, this is probably not super exciting to watch so I'll try to limit myself but this is kind of where I have a lot of fun with just throwing a bunch of images at it and seeing what happens um, so here's a sunset I think this is uh, down in LA somewhere and that's kind of cool I kind of like that um, let me see I'll, I'll limit myself to two more okay uh, let's try, let's try this concert one, image 16, image 16.
Okay, maybe, maybe. It's kind of interesting. I kind of want an image that has like, uh, I don't know, like identifiable color bands, both horizontally and vertically. Um, okay, I'm going to say, how about image, uh, how about image two? What happens with that? All right, and I promised that this would be my last one for this for this version of the algorithm anyway. And yeah, okay. <laughs> it's a, it's all right. Uh, I don't hate it. Uh, and it is kind of a cool artifact. And I think there is more to explore here. But I don't know if it's like glitch art per se. So taking that image and glitching it out by applying this kind of liney filter. Eh, yeah, I don't hate it. But it's not quite what I'm going for. So let's try something else. Let's say maybe instead of drawing a vertical or horizontal line, maybe I'll just kind of draw a random line segment, or maybe I'll shorten these. Actually, let's try that. So instead of going from zero to width, what I'll do is go from like X, actually maybe let me make a variable int, uh, line size equals, I don't know, 100. Um, so I want to be like X minus line size. I guess I can divide this by two. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then this would be X plus line size divided by two. Okay. And then instead of zero in height here, this is going to be Y minus line size divided by two. And instead of height, it will be Y plus line size divided by two. Is this right? I think so. We're going to find out. So now I'm filling it up with sort of, um, you know, kind of crosshairs, which gets a little glitchier. I think that's kind of cool. Um, I'm almost suspicious that it's always a crosshair. It's probably not true, right? Uh, no, I don't think it's true, but it kind of looks like it's always a crosshair, but I think that's just a, an artifact of I'm drawing half of them as horizontal and half of them is vertical. Let's get something that has a little bit more identifiable. Let's go to Sam over here. I didn't ask Sam's permission to use her uh, likeness in this video. I hope she doesn't mind. I will give her royalties off of the zero dollars that I make from this. It's kind of fun. It's kind of glitchy. I kind of want to speed it up again, maybe to like 50 times. And that's closer. That's a lot closer to what I'm picturing when I see when I think of glitch art. This is a lot closer to what's kind of in my in my brain. So I don't know. A couple of things I could play with. Maybe I'll play with like stroke weight. Is that what it is? Stroke weight, stroke size, something like that. Uh, maybe let's run that and see what happens. And maybe you know, at this point, it's kind of up to personal preference and and what you kind of prefer. Um, I also think that maybe there's some anti-aliasing happening. So let me do like no smooth. So right now the lines are kind of blurry looking. And I think that's because by default processing does some anti-aliasing to make them look kind of, uh, I don't know, smoother, I guess. Um, so if you turn that off by no smooth, it should be kind of crisper. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I think that worked. Um, so that's kind of cool. It's... You know, maybe yeah, now I could play with the some other numbers like this number. Maybe this should be 20, but it kind of doesn't matter. Um, I kind of like it. I kind of wish that you could kind of still see what what the underlying picture was. So maybe this 100 is a little too big. Maybe I'll take that down to like 25. <laughs> it's kind of creepy. You know, that's kind of cool. Uh, another thing I could play with is like right now I am showing a horizontal line half the time and a vertical line half the time. Yeah, um, I could change this ratio. So maybe I should say like I'll give it a 75% chance to draw a, uh, is this a horizontal line? X, Y, yeah, this is a horizontal line. And I'll only draw a vertical line like some of the time. That's another thing I can play with. And it looks a little different. But I could I could go either way. I kind of I could take it or leave it. Um, 
So let's maybe just throw a couple of, uh, of images at, at this version of the algorithm before I, maybe I'll try one more thing after this. I kind of like, I kind of like that. Um, so let's see, how about 27? I could do something like r randomize which image I show as well. That could be fun. That's kind of cool. I kind of like what happens with this like tower thing. Do I have one of just towers? I think I do somewhere. Uh, yeah, I'm just 29. Let's try that. And oh, that's that's pretty canonically glitchy to me. You can kind of still see what it is, but it's it's just kind of trippy. Uh, so I'm into that. That's actually really cool. I actually really love that. Uh, so the the end goal of this is to share you know something on January. So I might end up converting this to a GIF or something. Um, I think that's going to be pretty close to my my end result. So I'm pretty happy with that actually. Uh, let's try 28. That's got a tree in it. That might be cool looking. Yeah, same idea. I kind of like the the sort of glitchiness of of like applying this filter to like a nature thing, but like having the sort of horizontal and uh, vertical and horizontal bands kind of makes it look cool. Um, you know, I could keep playing with it, and I probably will, but do I need to do that on video? Probably not. Uh, I encourage you to throw your own images at, at this algorithm. Um, yeah, that's cool. Um, okay, so maybe one more idea that I had bouncing around in my, in, in my brain uh, is right now I am drawing horizontal and vertical lines. What if I have them be all over the place and by that i mean instead of drawing only horizontal and vertical what if they can be kind of at any angle so i'm going to comment this out because my guess is i'm going to keep it around i'm going to bring it back and so what i want to do is maybe i'll just draw a line from x y to x plus a random number between zero and line size maybe uh, y plus a random number between zero and line size. So now I'm starting at my x, y point, and I'm saying pick another point kind of near it and draw a line between those two points. Uh, so I'm hoping to see that uh, my, my, my screen should fill up with not just horizontal and vertical lines, but lines from you know any angle. And sort of sort of uh it's not any angle they all seem to be kind of going like down into the right and oh i think i see why but you know this is kind of like th the definition of glitch art like i didn't mean for it to look this way but i don't know i'm kind of into it uh you know maybe maybe this is uh worth uh keeping around uh i don't know maybe i'll throw throw a couple images at it let's see <laughs> I kind of can't resist. How about image four? That looks kind of cool. Like how I'm just like giving myself compliments. Oh, look at that great image that I took. Um, yeah, it's kind of cool. Uh, but the reason this is happening is here when I calculate, or where is that happening? Here, where I calculate my second point. Um, so let me maybe just put this on its own line. Sure. Um, I'm saying draw a line from x, y, which is the point that we are um, sort of selecting from. We select the color from, from, from x, y, and then we draw a line from that point to x plus a random number and y plus a random number. So the second point is always going to be sort of to the right and below the, the first point. So I actually want to throw another number in here, maybe negative line size. So now instead of always adding a number to x and y, I am going to sometimes subtract a number. Uh, negative line size, line size. Technically, I guess I should divide these by two. It doesn't really matter because these numbers are kind of arbitrary, but just to be consistent, um, I'll, I'll throw it in there. All right, so now I expect to see sort of lines going all over the place. And yeah, now I do, and that's that's pretty cool. I kind of like that. It, it ends up kind of looking like I'm I'm looking through like a glass thing or uh, what's that called frosted glass or something um yeah i'm into that i'm into that let's go back to uh, 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 uh let's try 19. i also didn't ask ariel her permission but hopefully she forgives me um yeah okay 
I'm into that. You kind of can't really tell what you're looking at after a few iterations, but, you know, that's maybe okay. So I could also combine all of these. Maybe I'll just make another if statement. So I'll say if, um, uh, so a couple things we need to do. First, let me just dump this somewhere. Uh, the syntax is not right yet, but bear with me. Uh, so right now I have an if statement. I say if this random number is less than 0.70, uh, 0.75, first I need to store this because I want to use it twice. So float r equals random one. So now I can say if r is less than, let's say uh, 0.33 and else if r is less than 0.66, uh, else, okay. So now instead of giving it a 50-50 chance, I'm giving it a like 33% chance. Um, so there's a one third chance that I draw a horizontal line, one third chance that I draw a vertical line, and one third chance that I draw sort of a an anywhere line. Um, we're going to find out. We're going to see if this does anything interesting. And maybe, 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 I kind of, you know, I could keep playing with it. I kind of maybe want this to always be a 45 degree angle, which I think I can probably do actually. Um, sure, real quick, let's try it. Um, let me copy this into its own block and then comment it out because I think I think that's probably my favorite. Um, but just to get this working, I will say um, x minus line size divided by 2, y, oh, maybe not. Hmm. Yeah, there's a few ways I can do this. So what I was originally thinking is that I would do line size uh, divided by 2 and then x plus line size divided by 2, x plus line size divided by 2. But there's going to be a problem with this. Well, you know, it's up to you whether you consider it a problem or not. Um, but let's just see what happens. Um, you'll maybe notice if you are uh, as uh, sort of uh, bothered by these details as I am that the, the lines go either vertically or horizontally or at a 45 degree angle, but it's only one 45 degree angle. It's never, it's never the other 45 degree angle. So that's happening because I'm always like subtracting line size from the first points and then adding line size to the second points. So if I wanna go the other way, first, let's say, uh, let's change my else if statement to be like less than 0.75 and then I'm gonna make this two five and this five. So now I'm giving everything a 50 or a 25% chance to happen. So 25% chance horizontal, 25% vertical, 25% like going down um, 45 degree angle and then a 25% chance of a going up 45 degree angle. And so now let me think real hard about what these values should be. So I want the first point to be uh, it's going to get kind of gross because I still want it to go like through the point. So let's make the first point still the point, actually. Uh, or, oh man. Uh, the first point will be to the left of the point. That's for sure. Um, the next point will be below the point. So this needs to change to a plus and this needs to change to a minus. Right. Because I'm still thinking in terms of going left to right on my little line segment. I'm just moving... Um, whether the y value starts out higher or lower and ends the other way. Okay, I think this will work. Um, so that did work. I don't know if you can tell because you might not be as, uh, as interested in these details as I am, but now I have sort of four possible configurations for my line. It's either horizontal, horizontal uh, vertical, or uh, sort of 45 degree angle going down or 45 degree angle going up. Um, I could also go back to this where I just randomize it completely, but this, this is kind of cool. All right, so, uh, I mean, that's that's pretty good. Um, next, what I could do is, you know, of course, maybe I could throw a few images at it. Let's try, I don't know, image 22. I thought this one might be interesting because it's got, like, a bunch of, like, detailed, like, writing, uh, and we'll see if that comes through at all. And, you know, maybe, kind of, sort of. 
Uh, another thing I could do is, you know, I could randomize the size of this line. I don't know. It's easy enough. Let's try it. So maybe a random number between like 20 and maybe 25 and 75. Just to use some fun numbers. Um, and, uh, oh, uh, right. Needs to be an int. Okay. Actually, it doesn't. I could change that to a float, I guess. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And I actually kind of can't tell the difference. Mm, you know, I could take it or leave it. Kind of up to you. I'll maybe change it back to 50. But, okay, so that's cool. From here, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't have anything else planned. Um, I think that I will probably just stick around and play with random images and maybe go back and forth between this version of the code and um, this version of the code. Um, you know, it's kind of up to personal preference. This is kind of cool. I like I like how this ends up looking. Um, but yeah, this is glitch art, uh, or, you know, my take on glitch art. There's many things you could do. Um, so I'm drawing a bunch of lines, but you don't have to, it, it could be pretty much, pretty much anything. Um, let's see, where do I want to end on? Maybe, maybe 18, kind of like the towery ones. <laughs> Maybe. All right. So I'm going to stop myself because I could keep going. I could keep uh, playing around with the, the different algorithms and the different uh, images and fiddling with the like the parameters and stuff. But um, I'll let you do that because uh, it really comes down to personal preference. So um, to sort of summarize, what I did was first I loaded an image and then I did some resizing just to make sure that my math was uh, was re relatively easy to do, to be honest with you. Um, and then what I did was each frame, or you know, I'm losing that using that term a little loosely. Um, what I did was I generated a random point in that image, and I got the color for that image or for that for that pixel. So okay, let me start over. I got a point in my image, and then I got a color for that point. So I just pointed to a spot in the image, and I said, "Hey, what color is that?" Um, and then I did something. Uh, so I started out by drawing a bunch of circles, but I ended up drawing lines because this kind of matches the the aesthetic that I was sort of thinking of when I when I started thinking about what glitch art looks like. Um, and the rest of it was just really kind of drawing different kinds of lines and stuff. Um, but you could draw squares, you could draw rectangles, you could draw really anything. Um, and that is sort of how you create like image filters and, and glitch art stuff. Um, cool. So I'm going to leave it there. I will say, uh, if you take this code and run with it, like I would love for you to do that. I would love for you to take this and make your own glitch art or make your own January, uh, project or really just have fun with it. Um, and if you do, please let me know. I love to hear from you. So either leave a comment down below if you're watching this on YouTube, or if you're watching this on happy coding, then come to the forum. Uh, you can either scroll down to the bottom of any happy coding page to find the uh, comment section uh, in the sort of happy coding page of, of these. Um, or you can come to the forum directly. And this is where I hang out. So I, I'd love to I'd love to hear from you and uh, see what you're working on. OK, so with that, I'll say thanks for watching. Happy January 3rd. Hope this was fun. Uh, it was fun for me. Hope it was fun for you. And I will see you in the next one. Oh, let's actually look at what the prompt is for tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is intersections. OK, I'll have to think about that. And I will see you back here tomorrow for, for January 4. But uh, until then, as always, of course, happy coding.